Welcome to our meeting, pre-AUA. Uh, it has and always will be the surgeon that will ultimately determine outcomes regardless of any approach in technology, whether it is robotic surgery, endourology, anything. It's a surgeon behind the, the tool and not the tool itself. Uh, I'm going to cover the utilization trends for robotic surgery in bladder cancer, uh, the outcomes, the types of diversion, extra or intracorporeal, randomized clinical trials, and what the future holds. So if you look at the epidemiology, uh, this is a very nice paper uh, that just came out in Urologic Oncology that looks at the national utilization trends for robotic cystectomy in the United States. And if you look here, the trend is very unchanged for the last three years. Uh, it did go significantly up. Uh, it will show in the next slides from 0 0.1 to 2, from 0.6 to, to 1 percent to about 12 percent. But 2009 to 2012, in the last three years, it has significantly plateaued. And uh, <clears throat> again, this is a, the a paper uh, that came out in European Urology last year, very nice pu publication. It compares open and robotic cystectomy. Uh, it's a propensity-matched comparison from a nation-wide uh, sample. And it looks at mortality, 90-day mortality, 90-day morbidity, length of stay, readmission rates, and direct costs. And they did a propensity matching. Obviously, as you can imagine, there were 34,000 open robotic cases, uh, open uh, uh, cystectomy cases that were compared to about 2,000 robotic cases. And this is what they found. Again, as you can see, there is a trend <clears throat> in decline of open radical cystectomies, and there's a trend in increase of open radical cystectomies. However, if you look at the last three years, there is a significant plateau. And this is very different from the curves that you see for prostate cancer surgeries with the robot in the United States. So for whatever reason, uh, it's, it's plateaued uh, in terms of uh, the utilization. It has gone up significantly, but now at this point it's about around 12 percent. <clears throat> what they did find when they compared was that there was no difference in major complications or readmission rates uh, between the two techniques, between open and robotic. Uh, the robotic surgery did lead to a decrease in minor complication rate. Uh, there was a decreased length of stay with the robotic compared to open. Obviously, as you can imagine, the increased operative time with robotics. However, the most important thing to focus on is that absolutely no difference in mortality, morbidity, cost, any parameter for high volume surgeons in hospitals. So if you are an experienced surgeon who is doing radical cystectomy, whether you do it open or you do it robotic, the chances are that you'll be continuing to do well. And there won't be much difference between your two techniques. Uh, now then, they also did a threshold analysis that if there's any new technology, what should be the threshold for the new technology to be cost effective? And for robotic surgery to be cost effective, uh, the length of stay had to be seven days or less. And the OR time, the total OR time, had to be 380 minutes or less. So if you are able to achieve these two, you can actually make it a cost-effective operation. Uh, what about intracorporeal urinary diversion? There's a lot of buzz about this topic. Now, <clears throat> again, this is the most important slide on this particular topic. There are the presumed advantages of intracorporeal diversion, that you minimize tissue handling, that you minimize fluid imbalance because you don't have an open incision, that you limit the ureteral mobilization and hence, There'll be decrease in the stricture rates. Uh, cosmetically, it's better. You reduce the incision-related morbidity. There's an earlier return of bowel function and overall improved perioperative morbidity. Now, a lot of these advantages are real. A lot of these advantages are presumed. We don't know at this point. There are obvious challenges. Operative time is a significant challenge that for a lot of the intracorporeal diversions, specifically for neobladders, you need multiple teams and multiple surgeons, even in the most experienced hands, uh, for example, in the USC, uh, that have done laparoscopic and robotic te techniques, they've used multiple surgeons and multiple teams to do one procedure. And I don't think that that's very feasible and cost effective in most centers in the world. Uh, there's an obvious surgeon fatigue. There's a significant steep learning curve. I'll come to that. Uh, there's an increased cost. And there's no question that at least during the learning curve, uh, especially for the neobladders and, and, and for, for most of the procedures, you could have an increase in the complication rates. Uh, this is actually, Kurshi, this is your paper, right? Uh, this is Kurshi's paper looking at the first 100 consecutive robotic-assisted intracorporeal allele conduits. Again, remember, these are allele conduits. And if you look at the operative time, for the most part, the overall operative time is unchanged between Kurshi's first 25 and his last 25 in a 100-patient case series. 
Their diversion time did go down. But if you look at the overall time, there's no change. So even after doing 100 cystectomies, the overall operative time remains the same. Uh, then you then look at the follow-up. Uh, you look at the median length of stay. It's slightly less for the robotic, uh, for the robotic group. But if you look at the, uh, uh, the overall length of stay, uh, there's a pretty stable length of stay at about 9 to 10 days, even in the later cohort in the last 25 patients. So the point you want to make is, and remember, this is in the hands of Kurshid, who is one of the world's leading uh, robotic surgeons for bladder cancer. On the United States, in an average, an average urologist doesn't even do cystectomies. Someone who does about 10 cystectomies or more is considered a high volume cystectomy uh, uh, surgeon in the US. So when you're talking about learning curves, it's very different. To reach a learning curve of 100 cases, it's going to require someone who does about 10 cases, 10 years to master the technique. So it is not trivial when you're looking at intracorporeal diversions and apply your learning curve to that. <clears throat> you then look at most of the other series besides Dr. Guru's series, and the results are pretty consistent across the board, that most series have not shown any appreciable decrease in the length of stay by doing intracorporeal diversions or decrease in the operative time. Uh, you look at, uh, we did a prospective randomized trial, it was a single institution randomized trial, and this is one of the main reasons I have not switched to intracorporeal diversions, because if you look at my open and robotic uh, uh, OR times, they are fairly similar at about 285 to 300 minutes. Uh, so unless I see any obvious advantages, I'm comfortable doing this, the, the diversion extracorporeally. What about intracorporeal neobladders? Well, this is a paper, this is an EPOP, this is a combined experience between the Swedish group and Indy Gills group at USC, uh, looking at 132 patients. Uh, the mean OR time was seven and a half hours, the mean length of stay was 11 days, but this is the cash. You have two institutions, both of them are high volume robotic surgeons, both of them have significant experiences in doing robotic surgeries, and you look what happens. You look at the operative time and the, uh, and the, and the estimated blood loss, one institution was able to decrease them as time went on. But if you look at the next institution, even after a significant part of the learning curve was conquered, the operative time, the estimated blood loss, and the length of stay continued to remain the same uh, as, as the previous cases. And again, if you put all this in the perspective of learning curve, and the learning curve is very high, and the number of cystectomies that you do in your practice is significantly low, you get the picture whether you want to do intercorporeal diversions or you don't want to do intercorporeal diversions. Uh, this is a study that came again from the IRCC uh, group that Khurshid leads, uh, a retrospective study looking at uh, several patients with intercorporeal urinary diversions, and they, co they, they compared it to extracorporeal diversions. They did find an advantage at the 30-day and 90-day readmission rate in favor of the intercorporeal diversion. But what was also surprising, Khurshid, and maybe you can throw some light into this, was that there were more patients who were dead in the, <clears throat> in the extracorporeal group that leads me to believe that there could be a significant selection bias that could have led to some of these results. So, but obviously the conclusion from the IRCC study was that it is safe and feasible to do intracorporeal diversions. You look at the length of stay, you look at the complication rates and, and the blood, blood loss, it is similar. However, it is difficult to reach a meaningful conclusion, at least as of today, because of a lack of randomized studies. Uh, talking about landmine studies, this is a publication that received a lot of interest in the United States. It's a memorial paper uh, that did a randomized clinical trial comparing open to robotic cystectomies. Uh, about 60 patients enrolled in both the groups. And this study had to be closed early because of futility. And the reason being that the complication rates between the robotic and the open surgery was very similar. However, the OR time was significantly longer uh, for the robot compared to the open surgery and the length of stay did not show any difference. And this is the power of doing randomized clinical trials, that what you think or what you expect or what you desire may not turn out to be the case. Uh, we did a, a, a prospective randomized trial, a uh, single center, lo lo looking at the same uh, criteria. All these patients were obviously randomized. What we found was that the blood loss was lower in the robotic group, and the length of stay uh, was lower in the robotic group compared to open. We then did a prospective randomized trial looking at the health-related quality of life uh, in the same patients, and we did it preoperative at baseline quality of life and postoperative quality of life. 
uh, again, 20 patients in each arm. Uh, we did see that the quality of life returned to baseline at three months in both the groups. But again, we expected that there will be some improvement or robotic will be better in terms of quality of life compared to open cystectomies, but we did not see that in the study. That the perceived benefits of robotic surgery did not translate, at least in, in terms of patient-related quality of life outcomes. In the future direction, uh, uh, very, very happy to report that we are doing this prospective randomized trial, multi-institutional, uh, the RAZER trial, comparing open to robotic cystectomies uh, in the United States. We have a total of 350 patients, uh, 175 in each arm, we have finished accrual of the trial uh, about two months back, and in two years' time, uh, we will have the results. Uh, the primary endpoint is oncologic non-inferiority, and we obviously will also be looking at perioperative outcomes, improved functional recovery, quality of life, and cost. So my take-home message is that robotic cystectomy is certainly not superior in terms of decreasing perioperative morbidity, at least based on the data that we have and based on the prospective data that we have collected. I think both robotic and open have similar quality of life outcomes. There is a significant increase in utilization of robotic cystectomies in the United States, though recently it has kind of plateaued. Robotics is more expensive. Intracorporeal diversion is feasible, but is definitely challenging. At least as of today, there are no clear benefits, and I think it would be wonderful if someone like Khurshid uh, or Indy Gill or someone else uh, who, who does them routinely does a prospective randomized trial comparing extracorporeal to intracorporeal diversion if they, th if they find it meaningful.